Hey, good morning. It's your girl, Jersey Love Stuff. And if you're out there, thank you for joining in. Today, I will sing two songs I'm going to sing because he lived in the old rugged cross. Because the only reason I have hope and a lot of other people is because Jesus going to the cross. And maybe you haven't heard the news, but um, even if you're not a follower of Jesus, this message is for everybody. And um, okay, so the message of the parable I want to share is a story. Jesus was always speaking in parables. And no matter what religion you are, they still know that Jesus existed. Um, maybe they just don't believe that. But the parable of Jesus, um, I want to talk about the tax collector and the Pharisee when they went to the temple. It's about self-righteousness. And um, I've been, I hope this helps you and myself as well. All right. So I want to open with a prayer and then I want to sing a song um, because he lives in the old rugged cross. These are just two beautiful hymns. And I just want to say this, the Christian walk is a continuous, it's not just a catchphrase. It's a whole entire lifestyle that you start walking. It doesn't mean we arrive at perfect perfection. It's about acknowledging our fallingness. And that we falter, we fail, we mess up, but there's always grace from God. Each day is new grace. That's why I believe it says a righteous person falls seven times but will rise again. It's not about being perfect. It's about acknowledging ourselves and then walking forward. And God is patient. He's very patient with us little children. All right, so let's open with a prayer. And then we'll get into singing and the message all right dear heavenly father thank you for your beautiful word lord found in the holy bible i pray that whatever the viewer and myself are going through lord that you take it down and break those strongholds lord we know you hold the power and whatever you want to do with this message lord i'm just sharing it and you do the work lord amen our son holy spirit amen all right, so I am going to sing Because He Lives by Carrie Underwood, and then I'll sing The Old Rugged Cross. Okay. In three, two, one. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to He lives, all fear is gone, because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because He lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives but greater still the This child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because 
because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he Because I know he holds a future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. That was because he lives. And I hope wherever you are, somebody will stop in. <laughs> If you don't, you know, I hope that you see this wherever you are across the world. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube. All right. Let me just get a drink really quick. One second. Oh, coffee. I love coffee. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to sing. Hold on, my mic clipping. All right, so I'm going to sing The Old Rugged Cross by Carrie Underwood cover. All right, this is about Jesus going to Calvary. If you're a Christian, maybe you're not a Christian, maybe you're just watching this, but as a Christian, we know and we we that's what we hold dear is because that was our only hope jesus going to the calvary being crucified he could have got out of it because it was god's son sent and aren't in he was born of a virgin but he was got half man half god because he was god's seed so he came to the earth he was the atoning sacrifice so we're not condemned if we sin not like we do it on purpose but of course every day is a challenge right each day has its troubles so that's what the song is about. It's because um, all rugged cross because the blood is so divine because it was God's blood. It was God's son. He came to earth, you know, was his seed. He was born. He uh, he understood how we feel because well, God created everything on earth, but he came to earth and he felt all the pains, all the heartaches and everything. All his disciples um they left him by the end before he was going to be crucified. They all left him. and um, But he forgave them. All right, so this is what this song means to me. Amen. All right, so here we go. I don't like the hard floor. All right, here we go. This is the old rugged cross in three, two, one. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. In the old rugged 
crooked cross, stained with blood so divine. Oh, wondrous beauty I see. T'was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Yes, I'll cherish the old cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen, guys. Thank you for listening. And um, not only, I want to say this, not only was Jesus crucified, but he went to hell, defeated death, and was resurrected, but he walked around, and that's why we have hope, because there's resurrection after we pass away. But, um, of course, we're not Jesus. There was only one Jesus. And nobody in this, um, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to get into the message, this message. I'm going to share the story of the parable of um, the tax collector and the Pharisee. All right, so I do want to open up. Let me just, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, whatever you want to speak to the viewer, I ask you to speak. Amen. Okay, so I want to open up with love. What is love? Love is the greatest command of all. Hold on, I'm going to read. Like when you get married, or people have this on their wall, sometimes you'll see it. Um, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to read the chapter. What does it really mean to love and what, it's, what is it doesn't mean? So this could be for children. This could be for parents. This could be for aunts or uncles, everybody, all of us, friends, family. We're all gathered around. Let's listen to what the Bible says. All right, so it's in First Corinthians 15. Okay, First Corinthians. Okay, love is indispensable, which means it can't be thrown out, right? Indispensable. Let me lower down my mic for a minute. Okay, so. All right, love is not always easy. You know, people are difficult to love. And sometimes when people aren't doing what well, we really want them to do it we sometimes turn our back right okay so this is chapter 13 um chapter 13 and then i'll one the whole chapter i'm going to read all of 13 love is indispensable and yet i will show you the most excellent way if i speak in tongues of men or of angels but do not have love I am only a resounding gong, or resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Oh, wait a minute. I, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast. 
but do not have love, I gain nothing. Now this is what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, prophesy in part but when completeness comes what is in part disappears when I was a child I talk like a child I thought like a child I reason like a child when I became a man I put the ways of childhood behind me for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror We're, when we look in the mirror we just see on the outside right then we shall see face to face now I know in part then I shall know fully even as I am fully known God's going to show us really what we look like when we go to heaven and now these three remain faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love love is the greatest command and it's not easy to do but if you can keep this by in your heart get it down bring it to remembrance when you get mad with that with your significant other because they're not living up to your expectations remember really what love is right I know it's hard because I fail at love sometimes even as a parent I would get mad at my children but we're not supposed to lose our temper walk away if you have to and it holds no record of wrongs so if you're pulling up somebody's past from two three years ago and still holding over their head that's not love that is not love and when you say I love you but I hope you don't disappoint me that's not love that's only self-seeking it's self-seeking for yourself has nothing to do with the other person okay so that's that now I want to read I wanted to start with that Luke so go the parables of the tax collector and the Pharisee. It's um, Luke chapter 18, verse 10, start at. Okay, so this is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. It's verse 9, 18, verse 9. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. So he's he's talking to everybody, but I think believe more highly to the believers because they're supposed to be more forgiving. But no, I think it's everybody. So verse 10, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, who was the teachers of the law, and the other a tax collector. Now, the tax collectors were despised because they didn't just tax people. They taxed them what they wanted to, and they took extra. They just made up their own amount of money. So they were thieves, basically, you could say. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Now, you may say, oh, I never did this. It's we all have been self-righteous at one point or another, and I'm going to give a couple examples. But Jesus never stood on the side of somebody throwing stones like the lady where they were throwing, going to stone her to death because she was caught in adultery. 
he stepped in and he said, which one of you who has never been without sin, throw the first stone. He knew what they were. He knew their hearts because he was God's son. He knew everything. The oldest started to the youngest because the youngest has less sins. Let's be honest. They're innocent. Children are innocent. But by the end, he said, woman, who condemns you here? I mean, murder is a sin, right? But under the law of Moses, they were supposed to stone, I guess, a woman caught in adultery, right? I don't know what they did with the man. I don't really know. But this was the law. And um, so it was like against the law even. We shouldn't kill people, right? But they were going to stone somebody to death. So he, Jesus was always... He always wants to protect us, help us people, and he's still there. So if you think, because we know the Bible, right? A lot of people that don't read this or don't know, they're not responsible for this because they don't follow religion, right? If you're full of religious, it means nothing. If you're just, it's just for a show, basically, right? But love is action. It's like giving somebody a pair of shoes if they need it, not announcing it in front of everybody, but you can do it, obviously. But um, Jesus was always swooping in to help that helpless sheep. You know, the lady at the well, he knew she was had all them husbands. Basically, she was sleeping with other uh, men. But he wanted to give her the drink of life because she was looking for something in somebody else that only he could give her. And that's a lot of people are looking for something that they can't find in this world. They can't find in somebody else. It's only found in a relationship with Jesus. But until somebody comes to that realization, it's not our responsibility. We can share the gospel and give them hope. But you can't force somebody to do something. Everybody has freedom, just like we all have had. And, um... Like being self-righteous, we see it on the TV even sometimes. I'm just trying to give some examples. But Jesus is never standing on the side of somebody who's lifting up a stone to hurt somebody else by their words. Words can hurt people, destroy. We're supposed to, the tongue has the power of life and death by building up or destroying. And we're supposed to build up one another. And when we see someone in pain, when we see somebody hurting, we're supposed to have compassion on them, get their hand and lift them up, be honest with them. But when somebody's in a very low state of mind, they're, the last thing they need us to do is to throw rocks at them because we have no idea when we will be in that situation. And that's the world could change if we could be nice to one another and not look down on people. Like, for example, um, you see it sometimes with the dog food this is just an example like people say i would never give my dog food like that that's dry kibble you know disgusting but it's like being so high up you're looking down on people condescending but they're feeding their dog the point is they're feeding their dog that's the whole entire point right or their animal it doesn't matter and then especially like sometimes people, um, they just do stuff that will look self-right. They only do it to look good to other people. So it's, um, it's hard to wrap your head around, but like that with the dog food, like an example like that, or you follow an extremely strict diet and you constantly talk about it and like rub it in people's faces Maybe the people can't afford that kind of food, you know, and if they could, they would do it. And a lot of people, I don't want a strict diet because it's very hard to adhere to something like that. I don't want that. We have enough rules in this world, but the problem is when you put your standards onto somebody else and then what you do is you're measuring yourself by somebody else that's lower than you and that's the only person we as followers of Jesus, or if you want to look, if you're wondering, nobody has the business to look down on you because we're all human and God created us all. And we all have failures, faults, right? 
But the only person as believers we should be comparing ourselves to is Jesus. Yes, he was perfect. So the measuring stick, it's never lowered an inch. The standard is never lowered. But he knows that we fall. But you cannot compare yourself to somebody else. Like, for example, maybe you work 70 hours like I do work this week 69 hours and I'm telling you it was extremely hard thank God I have off today but I don't brag about that because I don't feel good that I have to work that many hours you know but what I was going to say so some people will work extra hours but then they'll say you know this guy only works 40 hours you know and um he's always broke well maybe he doesn't want to Maybe he can't handle work in 70 hours. And most people can't. I mean, it was extremely hard to get through this week. I'm not even going to lie. It was extremely hard. But I don't really have a choice to pay my bills or not, you know. But if I could, I would probably cut it down to 50 because it's a lot, you know. But um, that's the thing is putting your standard that you set, you set a, this high standard, but you're trying to push it onto somebody else. So let's say, for example, um, and this is another thing too, like um, maybe you have a um, household of two parent, two people, and you have two incomes. So you don't really understand what it's like for that single parent, and it's not their fault most of the times. Sometimes if it's an abusive relationship or something like that, you have to get out of that, right? If the person won't get help, you have to get out of that situation, so it's a struggle you're not always able to work all them hours because you got to take care of your kids or you know like um people will want you to live up to this lifestyle of never having time to just relax because they they fill their entire day with all these activities and it's never just like a relaxed time most people can't handle that but they give it to themselves to kind of lean up to somebody else's standard because this person sets a standard so high you don't have to do that you don't have to take on somebody else's standard of what it should look like there the only thing that God requires of us is that we do the best that we can do you look at yourself and that's when you want to start judging other people you need to really self-examine see and you'll, when you start to examine yourself, maybe you're full of pride. Maybe you're full of greed. Maybe you're just chasing the dollar, right? So you don't care about anything but making this money. And that's, you miss a lot of blessings, you know? Hey, Alma. Good morning. How are you? Um, uh, this message was a little bit hard. <laughs> but I think I got it every time I thought I got it it was a lot but I was trying to um understand of self-righteousness but um it's basically taking your standard and putting on to somebody else like for example maybe on here you get to everybody's channel so you're thinking that everybody has that time to get to your channel but the reality is is there's a lot of stuff that we don't see um like, you know, how much people work or their families or if they're sick, if they're going through some procedure, we don't really know. And there's no way somebody could watch 100 people's channels, you know, so we got to offer grace just like as if we would want somebody to give us grace. But the main thing is with being self-righteous is we set these standards very hard, high for ourselves in our own way. And then when somebody doesn't live up to our standards, then we judge them because we made up these standards that is not even really what they want in the first place. And it's about offering grace, right? It's okay, Alma. I um I didn't really know what time I was getting on here it was just I was going to do like 8 o'clock. I could not get on here 8 o'clock. I wish I could give a set time, but sometimes I can't. I don't know if I'll be ready by then, you know. But um, I wanted to close out to forgiveness. 
because Jesus says if we forgive others, he'll forgive us, right? Let's see. Uh, forgiveness. All right, Matthew 6, 14. And the thing is, too, we can't tear people apart. We need to be united together, you know, because we're all a mess at time or another. We need people to have grace on us. I'm not running to the person who's going to just tear me apart because I'm not living up to their expectations. I'm going to go to somebody who's going to be compassionate on me, you know. All right, so this is Matthew 6, 14. Um, so let me just read the Our Father prayer. And then, so it's actually um, 9 through 14. And you could pray any way you want to, but this kind of gives us an idea of everyday daily walking. So then this is how you should pray. Our Father, how, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So we have to always forgive people. I mean, it may be hard because if somebody's doing something on purpose, purpose but you can forgive them and you can distance yourself you don't have to stick around there it's not about being a doormat for somebody right that's why we have this guidebook but forgive them so it can set you free because then you won't focus on it you know and then down the line like this says forgive other trespasses as he forgives us right um because i i definitely need forgiveness daily from god i ask him and this doesn't say this, but I believe like when we have something, there can be false guilt too. If we've confessed it and we ask God to forgive us, he's faithful and just to forgive us. He doesn't hold anything on top of us, right? Like if somebody came to me and they apologized, if they did something wrong and they apologized, I forgive them because who am I to not forgive them? I'm a poor pitiful wretched sinner and i'm still i still sin i still fall short so who am i to not forgive somebody if they ask me to you know even if they don't i extend that grace but maybe it take me a little while but i try to forgive people so i'm not going to sleep angry at this person or whatever you know but i do let the person know if they have offended me right you have to let somebody know sometimes also but i feel like if you have guilt on you but if you haven't forgiven somebody for what they done maybe five, ten years ago, give them a call or send them a letter and forgive them. Just do it for yourself. And then maybe that's why God's pressing on you because we haven't forgiven other people. I don't know for sure. I'm not God. But that had came to my mind. And also Jesus rescuing always the sheep. So he's not standing on the people. He never sat at the Pharisees' table. He did a couple times, but every time he did, they would always uh, look down on him because he was doing something on the Sabbath. You know, they were good people, but they had these always burdened down by uh, extra rules and regulations, and they did stuff just to look good in front of people. But they forgot love. They were hard, had hardened hearts. And that's what the danger is of being a Christian sometimes, is our hearts become hardened. But when you read Jesus' commands, it's going to change. Really, that's why I'm doing one a week so I can learn, too, to, kind, to get it in me. I'm not going to be a perfect Christian. None of us are. But it, this isn't for me, right? Well, it is for me. It's for all of us. But um, I hope this helps you. Yes, I haven't seen you in a long time. I um, thank you for coming out. And um, I don't know if you guys could think of anything like um, self-righteousness. It's a big turnoff for me. 
And I know I have been there before, you know, but I'm trying to catch myself. I don't like to judge people because I don't like people pointing fingers. I run from that stuff. And, um, because I just think it's wrong. All it does is destroy people's characters when people attack the character. You know, you're not free to be yourself. And, um, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great day. God bless you. Hey, good morning. I'm just wrapping up, Nancy. I will see you guys later. Have a great day. God bless you.